module discusses handling difficult call situations. It would be nice if every call was a breeze, if every caller was pleasant, and you had answers to all questions asked of you. Obviously, this isn't always the case. Under the umbrella of difficult call situations, there are those that can be controlled and those that simply cannot, and we will distinguish between the two. We'll also examine calls that need to be escalated and define to whom they should be escalated to, as well as tips on how to keep your composure even when the caller has clearly lost his. You'll learn how to handle a complaint from a customer as well. And finally, how to avoid taking things personally when a caller takes out his anger or frustration on you. No expert looks forward to a difficult call situation, but with the proper knowledge and skills, you will at least be prepared and equipped to perform admirably. As an expert, you are sure to encounter upset callers, and this can be difficult. But just because the situation is difficult doesn't mean that it's beyond your control. If you're speaking with someone who is clearly upset, it is best to avoid being defensive or dismissive, as this usually makes things worse. Rather, try to identify the reason the caller is upset and acknowledge it. Exhibit empathy towards the situation. Speak in a calm tone and focus on what you can do to assist the caller, letting him know that you are listening and are there to help. Utilize your knowledge of our customer and what you know about their business, as well as your script to guide you to the solution, all the while avoiding the urge to give advice. Inevitably, you'll also encounter instances in which the caller's needs do not coincide with what the script or your knowledge of our customer dictates. Perhaps the caller doesn't understand why you cannot personally solve his problem and the call becomes difficult. Remain poised, maintain transparency, and attempt to explain things in a different manner. Our experts control difficult situations every day. Let's listen to some calls to hear just how they do it. Thanks for calling Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. This is Lisa. How may I help you? Yeah, I'd like to speak to Bill. I'm sorry, actually, Bill is currently unavailable. I can certainly take some information from you and let him know that you called. No, I, I need to talk to Bill. I had an air conditioner. I paid $5,000 for a unit a week ago. It's 85 degrees, and it's not working. This is unacceptable. I want my money. I, I got to talk to Bill. I am so sorry to hear about that, sir. I can certainly understand your frustration. Unfortunately, Bill is right now out servicing some other customers, but the best option is for me to get your information, and I will certainly let him know all the details so that he can help you out with that. When will Bill be back, do you know? He usually gets back in the office sometime after 6, but I can't guarantee when he's going to give you a call back. Okay. Well, I want you to let him know I'm, I'm extremely dissatisfied, and if I don't get resolution, I'm, I'm going to contact the Better Business Bureau. I absolutely will do that, sir. And again, my name is Lisa, and you are? My name is Kevin. Great, Kevin. And Kevin, what is your last name? It's Riley. Is that R-I-L-E-Y? Yes, that's correct. Do you have my information there? I you don't actually I... have it handy, sir, but let me make sure I've got all the correct information so that we can get back in contact with you more efficiently. Okay, yeah, the salesperson told me it was like the greatest thing ever, and one week and it doesn't work. It's pretty hot, as you can imagine. Yeah, absolutely. It's warm outside. Mr. Riley, what is the phone number that I can have Bill give you a call back at? It's area code 773-555-1212. Let me make sure I've got that correct for you. I've got 773-555-1212? Correct. Okay. And what is the address of your home where we did install that unit? It's 4321 Main Street. And what's the zip code where you're at there, Mr. Riley? That is uh, 19128. Great, and I've got 4321 Main Street with a zip code of 19128. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, and what type of unit was it that we installed, Mr. Riley? Uh, I'm looking at the paperwork right now. My salesperson was Bill. I'd, I'd really like to talk to Bill, like I said. And the it was a um, H, looks like it's an H21B. Um, super cooler. Now, is it H is in Harry, 2 1 B is in boy? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And you said that we installed it. Was it a week ago that you had said? Yes, it was uh, last Saturday, actually. The one week ago okay. today. And Absolutely. this is the first time I go to turn it on, and, you know, I expect it to work. You know, how it's Oh, absolutely. Here. Now, is it that it's not, is the fan not blowing? Is it not cooling? Are you setting it at a certain temperature and it's not reaching that? No, nothing happens. I, I have the thermostat set. I tried to turn it on. I'm not 
know, the air conditioning expert, I went down, I looked at it, she's not even turning on. Okay. Again, Mr. Riley, I certainly do uh, you know, apologize for any problems that you're having. I have notated in here that you did just get installed a week from Saturday, that you turned it on, and that nothing is happening. Um, and I will let Bill know that you do need to speak with him as soon as, he's, as he possibly can give you a call back. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Despite your best efforts, there are some situations that you simply cannot control, such as a language barrier, a bad connection, a technical problem with your computer or our script, or even a caller that is challenged with hearing you. There may also be times when the caller's needs cannot be helped by our customer in the time or manner the caller wants. When these situations occur, the easy thing to do is to say, I can't help you, or I'm just an answering service. However, there are far more effective ways to respond to these instances than resorting to these forbidden phrases. If a language barrier exists, apologize to the caller and quickly determine if any of your coworkers are better equipped to handle the call. If no one is immediately available, do your best to at least get the caller's phone number and let her know that you will contact someone who is more capable of providing assistance. If the telephone connection is poor, explain to the caller that you are having trouble hearing her in a calm voice. Even if you are attempting to be heard over static, elevated voice volume can be mistaken for frustration or annoyance. If you have a computer issue, such as a slow connection or a problem with our script, apologize to the caller. Do your best to assist her and avoid dead air using the techniques discussed previously. Finally, should you encounter a caller who has difficulty hearing, the best practice is to speak slower than usual and raise the volume of your voice without yelling. Remember to imagine yourself in the caller's position and you'll have an easier time finding the patience and proper tone to communicate effectively. Thank you for calling Medici Landscaping. This is Kyle. How can I help you? Hey, Kyle. My name is uh, Mark Fair, uh, and a neighbor of mine uses your service, and I'm calling because I need some service in my house, and I'd like to tell you what my problem is. So um, I just moved into the house, and the previous owner, I don't think, did a whole lot of work last year to the lawn. So there's a lot of, a lot of rough patches there. Uh, I have a ton of crabgrass. There's a lot of dandelions. And uh, so I have a lot of neighbors on my street who, uh, you know, they, they have really, really nice lawns. And, uh, but I don't really know anyone yet, so I don't know if anyone actually uses your service. Uh, but I, I really am the house up there. So I've been going and buying some, uh, some, uh, some, some home goods stores. <laughs> too well for me right now. Uh, so I, I want to try uh, to... Unfortunately, sir, you, you keep cutting in and out. Let me get your information. I can have one of the technicians call you back and give you an estimate on work. Uh, may I have your first and last name again, sir? Thank you for calling Delaware ENT. This is Lisa. I'd be happy to help you. Hello. Uh, can I speak to a doctor, please? Oh, certainly. Again, my name is Lisa. And your name is, sir? Hello. Yes, I'm calling to speak to a doctor, please. Oh, absolutely. What is your name, sir? What's your name? My name is Lisa. And who are you? Hello. My name is David Ruby. I'm calling to speak to a doctor, please. Certainly, Mr. Roby. Is there a phone number the doctor can give you a call back at? Hello? Hello? Could you please speak up? I'm calling because my hearing aid seems to be active. I cannot hear very well, or you're not speaking loud enough. Absolutely. What is your phone number, sir? Yes, right. This is David Rubin. I'm calling to speak uh, to a doctor, please, about my hearing. And what is your phone number, sir? Your my phone number? Yes, sir. My phone number is two one five five seven four one four two eight. That was one four two eight in the end. Hello? Yeah. Hello. Did did you get my phone number that I just gave you? I did, sir. I will have one of our technicians call you back so they can help you with that battery. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you for your help. You're very welcome, sir. Have a good evening. Thank you. There are times that a caller starts out with an even tone, but then he doesn't get the answer from you that he hoped for or expected, and the call takes a turn. 
and not for the better. He may become frustrated or angry, and these types of call escalations can get ugly if you fail to maintain control. The easy thing to do is disconnect the call, but that is the last resort. In some cases, he may demand to speak to your manager, and you need to decipher whether he means the supervisor for a customer or your personal supervisor. If the caller's anger is justified, express empathy and repeatedly remind him what you can do, avoiding mention of your limitations. If the anger continues, sometimes a change in voice helps. Ask your supervisor for assistance and the caller will perceive that he is being helped. This can often resolve the situation without doing anything different than you had intended. The following are examples of call escalations and the efforts of experts to keep control. Thank you for calling you, Dream Management Company. This is Lisa. May I help you? Uh, yeah, I need to. I need someone out to my house in the next, uh, let's say, five minutes because my refrigerator once again is not working. Um, can you help me out with that, please? Well, certainly, sir. Let me take your information, and I can get it to our service technicians so they can give you a call back and set something up for you. Uh, can you just contact them? Um, I, I really, I don't have time to give you my contact information. Can you just contact them and please tell them to come out right away? Can you have someone here in the next five minutes? Well, unfortunately, sir, they're currently out on our property, but I certainly can make sure that they know that it's important that they call you as soon as possible. Okay, that's that's not good enough. Listen, I I called in last week. My refrigerator wasn't working. I got home from work. It was very hot. Okay, all my food all my food spoiled, and I was told when they came out and fixed it that it was good to go. I just got home. I have a birthday party for my daughter tomorrow. I have an ice cream cake in my refrigerator. The thing is a puddle. It's a puddle. Okay. I don't understand. I pay my rent on time every single month, and I just get home, and I find this ice cream cake's a mess. I have a party, and, and I'm frustrated. I need someone out here right away. Oh, I can certainly understand that, sir. You know, again, unfortunately, everyone is currently out on the property that would be able to assist you. Um, but I, I, I want to speak to a supervisor. I need to speak to a supervisor. Okay. Um, sir, I can certainly put you through to our maintenance supervisor. You know, and again, I do apologize if you're experiencing this. May I ask your name just so that I can put you through and let him know who he's speaking with? It's Henry James. He should remember me, apartment B45. B45, wonderful. Well, I'm going to put you through to Carl. He is our maintenance supervisor. May I place you on hold while I call him? Fine. Thank you. Providing a wow experience to our customers is our goal, and we succeed far more often than we fail. However, there are times that a customer calls with a complaint about a particular message or about how we are handling an account in general. There is a chance that retaining that customer relies solely on how you respond. So listen closely to how such situations should be handled. First and foremost, apologize. Even if you have never answered a single call for that company, you need to take ownership as if you are personally responsible for the customer's disappointment. Be sure to empathize. Next, let her know how much we appreciate the opportunity to partner with her company and that you are there to assist her with rectifying the situation. Gather further information about the root of the concern and then promptly connect the caller with a member of your customer care team best equipped to help. If no one is immediately available, let her know that you will personally see to it that the call is returned in a timely manner. Listen to how your fellow experts have handled customer complaints with great success. Thank you for calling Fly With Me Travel. This is Karen. How may I help you? Hi, Karen. This is Emily with Fly With Me Travel. How are you today? I'm good, Emily. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Actually, I'm not really doing all that well. We have all of our messages, once you guys take them, get sent over to us automatically by a fax and email. And I've noticed lately in the last week or so that I've gotten a few numbers that are wrong. And obviously that's not good for me because if I don't have the right number to call people back at, it means I don't have any business from them. I really need to talk to somebody to get this problem fixed so that I get right numbers so I can help grow my business. Emily, I am so sorry to hear that you're having these issues, and certainly we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing um, regarding your account and getting the information correct. Now, what I would like to do is get you through to one of our customer service managers to assist you, um, and certainly they'll be able to take a look at the account, take a look at the messages, and see what's going on and look into making sure that we um, are getting the right information each and every time for you. Would you be okay with me placing you on hold while I try our customer service manager? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Emily, thank you so much for holding. I do apologize, but Jane is currently unavailable. 
May I go ahead and take your information and have Jean give you a call back shortly to follow up with your concerns? Oh, certainly. Um, again, it's Emily, and I'm with Fly With Me Travel. And Emily, is that E-M-I-L-Y? It is. And your last name, please? It is Jones, J-O-N-E-S. J-O-N-E-S. Thank you so much. And what is the best number to have Jean read to? It is 775-928-4283. All right, I'm going to go ahead and repeat that back to make sure I have it correct at 775-928-4283. Yes. Okay, and the concern that you have is um, with message accuracy and numbers not being brought over to you correctly. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, well, I will go ahead and get this information to Jane so she can call you back. And, again, I do apologize that you're having this issue, but we will certainly make sure that we get it corrected for you. As an expert, it is always disappointing if you can't help a caller or overcome a difficult situation. If someone happens to take out his frustration or anger on you, it is extremely difficult not to take his words personally. Should you find yourself struggling with this, keep reminding yourself that if you happen to bump into that very same person later that evening, he would have absolutely no idea who you are. Resist the urge to abandon transparency, as that is an easy way out and unproductive. Permitting difficult calls to linger in your mind will undoubtedly affect your performance on subsequent calls, and that isn't good for anyone. Remember what we said in the earlier module? There is perhaps no skill more beneficial than a simple smile. So just keep smiling, and even the tough calls will seem manageable. Now that we have reached the end of this module, you have been exposed to some of the more difficult situations you may face as an expert. Rather than view such calls with apprehension, think of them as challenges. Regardless of whether or not difficult situations can be controlled, there are proven methods to handle them. If you find yourself on the wrong end of an escalating call, remember that proper tone of voice and a little bit of empathy can go a long way. Should a customer complaint arise, you have a chance to shine by convincing her that you are both committed to and capable of satisfying the concern. And even in the most extreme situations, never take things personally. <laughs>